Hey everyone, so today we are going to talk about covariance of a random variable and we are going to see some of its nice properties. So in earlier lecture we talked about variance of a random variable. So when you have one random variable, we study the variance and it tells us how the data is deviated from the mean, how much. Okay. But when you have more than one random variable, then we have covariance into the picture. Okay. So suppose x and y are two random variables, then you find covariance of x and y. Now, I mean, let me give you first a motivation, but then we will go into the technicalities. Now see, uh, like once you find the covariance of two random variable, you will get a number. So suppose if you have um, stock of two companies, say stock A and stock B. Now with the help of his earlier behavior or patterns, you, you have the data and from there to find their covariance. Now suppose if the covariance comes out to be positive, that means those two stocks are, uh, you can say, directly related. They are directly proportional. Now, what do I mean by directly proportional? Like if the covariance comes out to be positive, that means what? One can conclude that if stock A price will go up, then stock B price will also go up. Or if stock A price will come down, then stock B price will also come down. Suppose if the covariance comes out to be negative, that means they are inversely proportional. That means if stock A is going up, then stock B will go down. And if stock A is going down, then stock B will go up. So that's why knowing the sign of covariance is very important. It tells us the behavior of the random variables. And that is also one of the reasons that people, many books you will say that you will see that they uh, classify uh, covariance into two types, positive covariance and the negative covariance. Positive means directly proportional, negative means inversely proportional. Okay, so you can keep this example of stocks in your mind. And this is used very widely in stock markets when you make a program or any such things. Now see, both variance and covariance measure how the data is distributed away from the mean. Okay, like because here also you can see the definition of covariance involves expected value of this random variable of x, deviation of x from its mean, random variable of y with respect to its mean. So variance and covariance both gives us the same thing. It measures how the data points are distributed over the mean. So variance measures the distribution of data about a single axis. Covariance measures about the distribution of mean about two axes because you have two random variables. Okay, so that's what the idea about covariance is. And one more thing you can see covariance between two random variables is a measure, it's a statistical measure of the strength of correlation between two or more sets of random variables. So that's what I said. It gives you the strength of the correlation between those two random variables. Okay, so this is, I hope you have got now a little bit of motivation and a little bit of idea behind what is covariance. Now let us go for the definition. So definition of covariance involves it is expectation of x minus mu x into y minus mu y. Mu x is a mean for x, mu y is a mean or expected value of y. And what is this by definition? We know that it is summation, summation because there are two random variables. It is x minus mu x into y minus mu y into f of x comma y. You vary over x and y. And your f is what? Your f is a joint probability distribution. So this is the definition of covariance. This is for discrete case. For continuous case, what it will be? For continuous case, it will be integration. Minus infinity to infinity, minus infinity to infinity, the whole thing into dx dy. So this is the definition. Now, for variance also, if you, if you recall, the variance for one variable, it was expectation of x minus mu x, the whole square. But then again, we, we find a nice relation between the variance and the expected value. So variance of x was expected value of x square minus expected value of x, the whole square. So here also we have a very nice relation involving covariance of two random variables and the expected value. Okay, now what is that relation? So let us try to find what is the relation. Now this is the definition, right? Now from the definition, what is expected value of something? It is double summation because you have two random variables, the product into f of xy, joint probability distribution of x and y. Now you simply multiply. So x, xy into f of xy minus x into mu y into f of xy minus y mu x plus mu x mu y. Okay. Now what is this? See, this is double summation xy f of xy. 
so you can see this is nothing but expectation of x y okay so expectation of x y is nothing but double summation x y into f of x y now what is another thing now see if you recall what was our mean of x when you have a joint probability distribution it is nothing but summation over x x into g of x where what was g of x it is our marginal distribution so for each x how do you find like if i want to find uh, g of 2 what you do you fix your 2 and you vary your y you sum it over like if you recall my earlier lecture on joint probability distribution if i wanted to find suppose g of 2 so my suppose my x is fixed you fix your x you vary your y right so what is this this is summation x for each x you are summing up over the y you are summing up over the y so this is nothing but summation of f of x comma y your x is fixed you vary over y so this was your marginal distribution so you can just take this x inside so summation summation x f of x y so summation summation x f of x y is nothing but my mean of x so this is minus this is mu y will come outside summation summation x f is nothing but mu of x similarly mu of x will come outside summation summation y f of x y is nothing but mean of y so this is again mu x mu y plus these two again are numbers they will come outside mu x mu y and what is sum of all f of x y it is one because it is a probability distribution so this is what we have so now here you can see this one term will get cancelled out so therefore your covariance of x y is nothing but expected value of x y minus expected value of x into expected value of y so expected value of x y minus expected value of x into expected value of y so this is the formula that people use widely whenever they want to find the covariance so uh, from here now one can see very nice properties like one of the properties you can directly see here like this this is what this is nothing but our covariance of xy now suppose if i say your x and y are independent random variables that means in that scenario what will be the covariance of xy it will be zero right it will be zero because uh, uh, independent random variable means what expectation of x y is expectation of x into expectation of y so in general we have seen the properties of expectation expectation of x plus y is expectation of x plus expectation of y so for plus minus scalar multiplication it behaves well but for product and division it does not behaves well but for product it behaves well when you have independent random variables so suppose if i say x and y are independent random variables then their covariance will always be zero okay so since they're independent definitely there won't be any relation between them therefore because see if it comes out to be non-zero then you will either have a positive sign and the negative sign positive sign or the negative sign once you have a sign positive or negative you know whether they are directly proportional or inversely proportional and then ultimately there will be a relation between them or there will be a connection between them but since they are independent therefore their covariance has to be zero okay or one can see this is the formula for covariance they are independent means what is this this is nothing but expectation of x y so they get cancel out so this is first property now before exploring some more properties let let us take one example so a joint pdf is given to you so when x is from 0 to 1 and y is from 0 to 1 so you have a square this is the function otherwise it is 0 question is what is covariance of x y so we will use this result that we just now proved so first i need to find expectation of x so what is expectation of it is integration minus infinity to infinity x into marginal distribution of x how do you find marginal distribution of x you keep your x fixed you vary your y so vary your y means you take integration y f of x y dy so either you can first find g of x by integrating this thing and then you put over here or you can directly use this formula so i think this is much more easier to solve so here x and y both are from 0 to 1 0 to 1 x into x plus y dy dx you solve this you get an answer okay so you get some number over here how do you find expectation of y again the same thing 0 to 1 0 to 1 y into x plus y dy dx 
if you have forgotten how to do double integration you can check one link in the description where i have mentioned how to solve this iterated integrals okay and what will be expectation value of xy it is integration integration 0 to 1 xy into f of xy what is f of xy x plus y dy dx so i think this is simple integration so simplify this value this value this value take the product put the values over here and pause the video solve it this is a first task for you so post your answer in the comment section now so i hope you have got the idea on how to find the covariance so solving is not difficult so if you want i can take let's take one example on a uh, discrete variable case so here is another example a joint pmf is given to you your job is to find the covariance between x and y so first i find will first we will find expectation of x so for expectation of x summation summation x f of xy so our x and y will vary okay so what we will get suppose when my x is 2 so what do have f of 2 comma 1 plus 2 into f of 2 comma 3 plus 2 into f of 2 comma 5 this is our x this is our y when my x is 4 4 into f of 4 comma 1 plus 4 into f of 4 comma 3 plus 4 into f of 4 comma 5 so f of 2 comma 1 is 0.1 f of 2 comma 3 is this f of 2 comma 5 is this always see where is your x written and where is your y written i have seen many times that people like in a hurry they always take this as x and this as y okay so always see where is x and y is given if it is not given it's better to ask what is x and y so this is the thing now you can put what is f of 2 comma 1 0.1 f of 2 comma 3 is 0.2 and so on put the value you get some number now you find expectation of y again the same thing summation summation y into f of x y so when your y is 1 so 1 into f of 1 comma 2 Plus one into f of one comma four. Oh, sorry, my x is two, y is one, x is four, y is one. Plus now take y equal to three, so f of two comma three plus three into f of four comma three. Take y is equal to five, five into f of two comma five plus five into f of four comma five. You get expectation of y. and then at the end find expectation of xy so here summation summation xy f of xy so now here both the product will come okay so so add six terms here add six terms here add six terms here e of xy minus e of x into e of y will give you the covariance of x comma y so just for as a practice make sure you solve this so here are the six basic properties that covariance satisfies so i'll just give you hint for almost everyone so that you can give a try now first one is when x and y both are same so what is covariance of xx it is nothing but the variance of x that's obvious because what is the definition what is covariance of x comma x by definition it is expectation of x minus mu x into x minus mu x because for x comma y it is x minus mu x into y minus mu y But your x and y are same, so it is x minus mu x into x minus mu x. So you have a square. This is nothing but your variation of x. So the first part is obvious, right? Now let's go for the second one. If they are independent, then the covariance is zero. That I already told you because covariance is nothing but expectation of x y minus expectation of x into expectation of y. When they are independent. independent events we have seen in the last lecture that expectation of xy is expectation of x into expectation of y so they are equal therefore covariance becomes zero now covariance behaves well with the uh, oh yeah so the third one is commutativity like if you in your school you must have seen when you say an operation is commutative if like a plus b is equal to b plus a so when you interchange the terms you get the same answer so covariance of xy is same as covariance of ix that's also easy because what is this this is expectation of x minus mu x into y minus mu y but product you can always interchange this both are real number you simply interchange what to get covariance of yx okay so covariance is commutative in nature it behaves well with the scalar multiplication that means covariance of ax comma y is a into covariance of x comma y a comes outside the same goes for 
y also like here if there is a b over here x comma b y then b will come outside okay so proof is also easy so here a x no so here you have a x okay and what is this this is your expectation of a x but we saw that this is a x in earlier when we saw the properties of expectation expectation of a x is a into expectation of x this as it is now we take out this a outside common here but expectation of a into something is again a into expectation that's what we saw in earlier lecture on expectation properties of expectations and what is this this is covariance of x y okay so by using the properties of expectation one can easily prove that a comes outside okay so that was the hint or i would say like i almost gave you the proof let's go for the fifth one translation when you do a translation in a random variable covariance doesn't change okay so what is this by definition it is expectation value of x plus c minus uh, mean or x minus expectation of x plus c into y minus expectation of y correct this is what the definition is but what is this this is expectation of x plus c minus expectation of x expectation is linear in nature so expectation of x minus expectation of c correct and then again this this term over here but what is average of some number is the same number so expectation of c is nothing but c itself let me remove this bracket so x plus c minus expectation of x minus c c minus c goes away so x minus mu of x y minus mu of y and i'm taking its expectation this is nothing but covariance of x y so i hope this proof is also easy and now comes the last proof so expectation of so now let me tell you this orally okay you can try this trust me now i think you have got enough confidence so this is expectation of x plus y minus so let me write it down expectation of x plus y minus its mean so expectation of x plus y close the bracket into uh, z minus expectation of z or mu of z whatever you are comfortable with but what is e this is e of x plus e of y so minus e of x minus e of y so take x minus e of x plus y minus e of y then you simply multiply you expand you get this as an answer okay so that's the hint for the last property and you can always use such kind of stuff okay because many times people ask what is covariance of 7x comma y and then you will wonder oh i have for x and y now 7 has come up don't worry simply multiplied by 7 you get the covariance of 7x comma y okay so like this you can use such properties and uh, yeah i think this much is sufficient to understand the concept of covariance so if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section and if everything is clear then do do not forget to like share and subscribe thank you